Welcome back everyone to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and I have a video for you today pertaining once again to Armored Warfare. Today we're going to talk about six more tanks that I think or feel could be added to Armored Warfare. So let's get the list underway. Hopefully you all enjoy it. And today we're going to start with the M901A1 Improved Tow Vehicle. This was in service with America in 1979. Uh, it's got a crew of four, and it carries two tow missiles in its launcher system. Uh, 1,500 of them were produced, and it's while it's not in service anymore with the United States, it's still in service with a few countries like Greece, Jordan, and Kuwait. Um, I feel this vehicle could be probably put in a game as probably like a Tier 6 Premium, uh, probably right alongside the uh, uh, C-13 TUA. Uh, TUA. Um, so yeah, let's, produce, let's uh, proceed on. And we got the Panzer 61 of Switzerland. The design would begin in 1950s, uh, and it would begin production in 1965. Its service would run from 1965 to 1994, when it'd finally be replaced by Leopard 2s. It was armed with a British uh, L7 uh, 105mm rifled gun. Uh, this actually was considered quite a decent vehicle for its time. Uh, it didn't see widespread e export because, well, actually didn't see any export. And that mostly has to do with Switzerland. Switzerland actually didn't produce a lot of these vehicles. Um, they also didn't really market them for export. It was never planned to export the vehicles. Um, Comparison-wise... It is very comparable to a Leopard tank. Um, I feel actually this could be put with the French tanks, uh, with actually the AMX uh, 5100 probably kind of alongside it, kind of like how they have the uh, the AMX 30 B2 Brennus, and then they have the OF40 alongside of it. Um, or even still, they could also probably get away with squeezing it in the game. Uh, as a uh, premium tank, maybe something for a future battle path or some type of missions you can unlock the tank. And next vehicle is a turretless vehicle. It is the ASU-85. I know there's probably going to be a little bit of gruff about this because it is a turretless vehicle. However, I do see the benefits of having turretless vehicles in-game, mostly improved reload times, uh, an improved reload time, improved view range, uh, improved camo, things of that nature. Um, it's got a small compact size. It would be easier to hide. Um, its design was from 1951. and would, uh, The design process would run from 1951 to 1959. Production would run from 59 to 1966. It is armed with an 85 millimeter D70. Um, and it was produced by Vietnam, or sorry, sorry, it was produced by the Soviet Union, uh, and it is currently in service with Vietnam. It is the only country currently using the ASU-85. Um, it was an airborne vehicle, um, and I could actually see this probably being fitted in around Tier 3, Tier 4-ish. Um, it wouldn't be extremely fast. Um, but its its mobility would be made up by its the fact it's got tracks. Uh, it, it can go places wheels can't go. Uh, so while it lacks speed, um, it, it does have it would have improved terrain resistances. Um, all in all, and it would be make for a good sniper type vehicle. The next hailing from Czechoslovakia is the Dan Dana. I had to double check that name. Um, its design process would be in 1976. It would enter service in 1980 and is still presently in service with Czechoslovakia. So far, a total of 672 have been produced. Um, it has a crew of five and it is armed with a 152 millimeter gun. It can actually fire high explosive and heat ammunition making it one of the few vehicles in-game that'd be able to fire a different type of ammunition, i.e. heat or hesh, 
a lot of the SPGs only fire high explosive as I'm recording this video. Um, as you can see, the back platform of the vehicle is a giant turret. Um, and one benefit to this is while it would have problems climbing hills and things of that nature, it has wheels. Um, and it, it would be a quite fast vehicle. It would probably honestly be one of the faster SPGs, if not the fastest FP SPG, being the fact that it is a wheeled vehicle, or at least on a road. Uh, you know, up in a mountain on a goat path, that could be a little bit of a problem. Um, it would be unique because it would be a wheeled vehicle. There's not too many SPGs. Actually, I really can't think of any SPGs currently in Armored Warfare that is wheeled. Um, and I could foresee this probably fitting around Tier 8 or Tier 9 actually as a premium or as an alternate SPG. All right, let's go to the next vehicle here. And we have the Ferret Armor Car. This is the Mark II slash 6. Entered service, the Ferret itself entered service in 1952 and it remained in service until 1951 with UK. However, it is still in service with quite a few countries. This particular model is armed with two vigilant ATGMs. Um, and there was 40... Uh, 4,405 of these things produced. Um, once again, I could see this as a lower tier vehicle, maybe a tier, actually probably mid tier around tier six. Um, maybe even you could probably sneak it in at tier five. Uh, it would be a fast rapid response vehicle. Uh, it would have a good camo factor. Um, however, it would have next to nothing for hit points and obviously being a lightweight wheeled reconnaissance vehicle, it would have nothing for armor. Literally anything in this game would penetrate it. Um, but there would still be benefits to it as a more, as I said, rapid response vehicle. And the last vehicle for this video. Yes, I know, folks, we already have the Bradley. Just let me continue. This is the M2A1 Bradley. It is armed with a 25 millimeter Bushmaster cannon, and it has two tow missiles, just like the Tier 8 model. However, what this has, or what this doesn't have that the other one has, is it actually has a weak, it would have a weaker engine, and it would also have thinner armor. Also, the ammunition stats would probably come out to be much weaker, uh, seeing that this is a much earlier model versus the M2A3. That is currently in game. Um, I would actually like to see this. Honestly, I think they should squeeze this thing in at tier seven and uh, kind of, I don't know, do something else with the warrior because the warrior's a hunk of junk. Um, it, anyway, this, this particular model was introduced in 1986. However, it would not remain in service long as it would be quickly upgraded to M2A2 standard. Now, a couple things to point out is, is its side skirts, instead of explosive reactive armor, is a laminate spaced armor. Uh, and that is the same way with the front. However, once again, the vehicle is a late reconnaissance vehicle and AFV. Uh, so armor is not really reliable. And this would lack a lot of the armor that the M2A3 endgame currently has. Uh, but anyway, folks, that's going to be the end of this video. There actually will be more of these done. Uh, it was kind of one of those things as I started looking at the different vehicles out there. Um, you kind of forget how many different tanks and other types of vehicles out there uh, that is currently out there that is actually not in game uh, in any sense or form currently. Um, but anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you for the next one.